Welcome to Dr. Ben's Micronutrients. Before we get into micronutrients, let's talk about what nutrients are. So nutrients are chemical substances found in food that are required by the body to provide energy, give the body structure, help with all its functions, as well as help regulate chemical processes. In other words, nutrients keep you alive and healthy. We cannot live without them. So, nutrients can be classified in many ways. One of them is to classify nutrients into two large groups, macronutrients and micronutrients. Macro means being large or exceptionally prominent and micro means small or very small as in microscope. Macronutrients are nutrients that are needed in large amounts. They are carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Now, water can also be included in this category. Micronutrients, on the other hand, are required in small amounts. This is a very large family of nutrients that encompass, in general, vitamins and minerals. The human diet requires both macronutrients, which are main sources of calories or energy, and micronutrients, which are required for virtually all metabolic and developmental processes. Here is a list of at least 40 essential micronutrients. I will speak on most of them in my next few talks. The first talk will be on a very important and popular micronutrient that is vitamin C. Welcome to Dr. Ben's micronutrients. I'm going to talk about vitamin C. Vitamin C is also called as ascorbic acid. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. All vitamins are broadly classified into fat-soluble vitamins and water-soluble vitamins. Vitamins A, D, E and K belong to the fat-soluble group and all the other vitamins belong to the water-soluble group including vitamin C. Now this is very interesting. During the end of the Paleozoic era, what happened was the, the, there was an introduction of oxygen. Now, oxygen is... is and can be very toxic. So many of the organisms were killed because of these high oxygen levels. And only the ones that had an antioxidant like vitamin C survived. This is also very interesting. To synthesize vitamin C, the species or the animal requires something called as gluconolactone oxidase. It's an enzyme. However, some species on this planet, like man, monkey, some pigs and some birds, have lost the ability to produce this enzyme gluconolactone oxidase. So they cannot make vitamin C. And so vitamin C has to be supplemented via food. Vitamin C deficiency that is scurvy or frank scurvy is now rare. And if it ever happens, it presents with striking signs and symptoms of swollen gums and friable gingiva, anemia, pain in the joints and swollen joints, breaking down of old wounds or bleeding into the skin, under the skin or into muscles and joints. Now this condition can be fatal if untreated. In our body, we have two forms of vitamin C, the reduced form called as ascorbic acid and the oxidized form that is called dehydroascorbic acid. They are interchangeable. Here is a table of recommended daily allowance of vitamin C in milligrams. So the requirement depends on age as well as conditions like during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Now, this RDA or recommended daily allowance was based on the possibility of vitamin C getting rid of scurvy. But under 
different circumstances. For example, if you are stressed and if your oxidative stress goes up, you might need more vitamin C. If you are infected or, or if you are uh, having a chronic disease, the requirement for vitamin C will go up. Vitamin C are abundant in mandarin, in grapefruit, strawberries, guavas and gooseberry, amla or Indian gooseberry, in vegetables like bell peppers, Brussels sprouts. Vitamin C also can be sourced from supplements. Vitamin C is widely distributed in all body tissues. It is found in lower concentration in body fluids. Vitamin C metabolites, that is oxalate salts, as well as unmetabolized vitamin C are excreted via the kidneys. A bit of vitamin C is however excreted through feces. Let's look into vitamin C benefits. Anti-inflammatory. Vitamin C is considered as a strong anti-inflammatory agent uh, because it inhibits many type of inflammatory mediators like TNF-alpha. Vitamin C works by donating two electrons to other compounds in order to prevent oxidation. So this is, it works as an antioxidant. Vitamin C has an efficient anti-cancer effect. It works on tumor cells by killing it. Tumor cells are quite sensitive to high doses of vitamin C. Vitamin C improves the immune system. Vitamin C deficiency can cause immune insufficiency and multiple infections or recurrent infections. It also helps with the uh, increase in antibody production, which is very useful in fighting infections. The anti-aging effects of vitamin C is mainly because of its antioxidant effect. It is also a brilliant enhancer of collagen which helps in cross-linking different uh, collagen strands and uh, helps in reducing wrinkles, improving the quality of skin as well. Similar to its anti-aging effects, vitamin C, because of its enhancement of collagen, helps in bone matrix as well. So it makes bones stronger. It also helps with the collagen that is required for forming a capsule or tendons of muscles. Several publications on the cardiovascular benefits of vitamin C. Vitamin C reduces overall cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So it can certainly help with challenges like coronary heart disease, heart failure, hypertension, as well as cerebrovascular diseases. Depigmenting benefits of vitamin C. The higher the ROS or reactive oxygen species, the deeper the probability of pigmentation produced. So here, vitamin C acts as an antioxidant by lowering the melanin formation in skin. So vitamin C is considered or is a very potent depigmenting agent and is used in the treatment of various cases of skin hyperpigmentation or dark skin patches. Let me conclude this presentation by saying that vitamin C is central for health.